This tutorial is sponsored by Skillshare. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint black power armor and everything else you need to get your Rhine hands painted. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint iron hands. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below, as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and it allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. And I massively appreciate all the continued support from these amazing people. I would also like to say a massive thank you to James, Christopher Harby and Zach Z, who have either recently become patrons or donated to the channel. It really does make a difference. I've built the heavy intercessor and sub assemblies because it just makes painting a lot easier. I can get to areas that I wouldn't have if the miniature was fully assembled. You can go watch my getting your miniatures ready for painting tutorial to see how I do it. I've also chosen to undercoat our iron hand with chaos black spray as it's the main colour for the armour and it's also a good base colour for all the silver details as well. I also have a tutorial of spraying your miniatures as well if you need some help with it. There are quite a few Space Marine chapters with black armour, so I always like to make sure I try and show you some variety in how that black armour can be painted, depending on the chapter. Through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your iron hands painted, and to make it easier to follow along with, I've divided the tutorial up into different chapters. Painting miniatures and Warhammer in general is a very creative and visual hobby that we spend a lot of our time enjoying and we want to be able to share what we've painted and our hobby experience in general with other hobbyists. A great platform for doing this is Instagram, but for me Instagram seems very complicated and there's a lot going on. But thanks to this video sponsor Skillshare, I've been able to learn more about how the platform works and what I can do to reach more people. And one of the courses I find really inspiring was Taylor Loren's Instagram success, How to Stand Out Online. Taylor Loren has a decade of experience working to grow Instagram accounts for big brands and celebrities which means you're learning from someone with experience. These courses take you through the Instagram algorithm, creating content and growing your audience as well as so much more. Even if you're not interested in learning about Instagram, Skillshare also has courses and lessons on more than just creative subjects. They also have hundreds of career focused classes too. You may want to learn to grow a new business or brand, find out ways to create passive income streams, or even just becoming more financially stable in the new year. No goal is too small and Skillshare teachers can make it less intimidating with classes that take you through a subject step by step. And to help you get started, you can use the link in the description to go and get a free month's trial with Skillshare so you can go and check it out yourself. Skillshare has really helped me improve my own skills and knowledge which has allowed me to massively improve the content here on Tabletop Ready. So you're gonna have to be quick because it is only available for the first 1,000 people and I don't want you to miss out. I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to painting. In this first section of the tutorial, I'm gonna go through the steps to getting the black power armor painted, including how to make it more interesting. Even though we undercoated our iron hand with Chaos Black Spray, it's still going to be a good idea to paint it using a bad and black from the pot. The reason for this is that the colour you get from the spray doesn't always match the colour from the pot, and because we may need to do some neatening up, or we may have just missed some bits when we sprayed, we don't want those areas to stand out. So using some bad and black, you first want to paint this all over the areas you want to be black, and to make sure we get a nice smooth finish, I would always thin your paint first with an equal amount of water. Also try and avoid going over areas you've already painted to prevent creating unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And I know it's tough to see but because we thinned our paint we won't have covered those areas very well. So we want to paint multiple thin layers to make sure we get that solid colour we want. Just make sure to let each layer completely dry before repeating the process. Painting black can be seen as a pretty straightforward colour to paint and it kind of is. 
but we can make paint in black a bit more interesting using a variety of different colours for the shades and highlights to change the tone. So you can either make it a warmer or a cooler tone for example. With black we can go straight into highlighting the armour and I'm going to go into some detail about highlighting because it's a skill that when you're able to do it well you can pretty much paint anything as it's a great way to practice brush control. Whenever I'm highlighting I like to keep the brush separate so I know I have a nice point to it when I come to use it. And when thinning your paint for highlighting I find I don't use as much water either as I normally would when layering as we won't be applying multiple layers. I then remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper which is going to help us keep control of our paint and prevent those thick blobby lines. Our first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight and this wants to be quite a thick line so it can still be seen when we apply thinner highlights later. Using Stegadon Scale Green, paint these lines along any edges and around any details and I'm almost using the side of my brush for this to get the thickness I'm after. This highlight is going to really help define and start to bring out all the details and panels of the armour. The next highlight we're going to paint is an edge highlight using Dawnstone. This highlight is going to be thinner than our first highlight we did and to make them easier to paint you can use the edge of your brush and run it along the edges to paint the highlights. If you have places you can't do this then just take your time painting thin lines along those edges to create the highlights. This can be quite difficult to do and it takes a lot of time and practice to get really good at it. But it really does make a difference in bringing out any details on your miniature. Finish highlighting the armour with a spot highlight using Ministratum Grey and some of the corners and to bring out some of the more prominent edges. Now you've finished painting the highlights, I hope you can see the difference it makes to making your power armour really stand out. Highlighting is something that's just going to take some time and practice to get good at, but I believe anyone is capable of doing it. You just have to believe you can do it and the confidence comes later. If you want to get fancy, you can paint some scratches and chips in the armour using Dawnstone. The last thing we can do to make our Ryan Hans armour have some more interest and add some warm tones to it is to paint some thin down Doom Ball Brown into the recesses around his boots and lower legs to give the impression of dirt and grime. So now we've finished our Iron Hands armour, hopefully you can see how interesting we can actually make black power armour look when we just throw in a few extra colours besides the usual greys. With the armour finished let's move on to getting all the metals painted. I want to go through painting all the silver on our Iron Hands in this section and see if we can create some variety on the different details. For any non-decorative silver on weapons and bionics, start with some lead voucher for the base colour. Next, give the lead voucher a wash using some Norn Oil. Finish these areas with an edge highlight using Stormhouse Silver. For the hands, start with some Iron Warriors this time. And instead of applying a wash, we're just going to paint the raised details using Iron Hand Steel. Again, finish with a Stormhouse Silver highlight. We can even do a third way of painting silver for the more decorative details like the chest eagle and for these details let's start with the grey knight steel. Create some definition with a wash of Drakenoff nightshade and when the wash is dried paint all the raised detail with some iron hand steel. Sometimes you may even have some gold details to paint as well. Start with some retributor armour then give these areas a wash using right clean flesh shade and finish the gold with an edge highlight using liberated gold. Just like black, if you have a colour scheme with a lot of the same colour over different areas and details it can really make a difference if you change up the way you painted that colour for variety making your miniatures look more interesting overall. With all the metallic details done, there isn't much left to paint so let's finish up in the last section of the tutorial. In this final section of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get the rest of the iron hands painted. Something that may intimidate some people when it comes to painting iron hands is the white bolt casing, but not here on Tabletop Ready. In fact, we love a challenge and when I'm done showing you, you'll wonder what you were so worried about. For the white weapon casings, I would first of all start with the base colour using Corax White, making sure to get a nice solid colour. To create the definition, let's paint some Fimrisian Grey into all the recessed details of the casing. 
Like me, you're probably going to have to neaten up with some Corax white, but that's okay. And because we used the Corax white, we can highlight it using some white scar. I told you it was nothing to worry about. To paint the belt and any pouches, I would start with some Rhinox hide first of all. Then apply a wash using Norn Oil to give that definition. Now neaten up these areas by using Rhinox hide again, but this time just on the raised details. Finish with an edge highlight using Gawthor Brown. We can have these details look more like leather just by painting little scratches along the edge highlights and around the flatter areas using Gawthor Brown for that cracked scratchy texture. As usual, I nearly forgot about the armour joints. For these, I would start by painting the ridges first of all with some Skaven Blight Dinge. Then paint a thin line of Storm Vermin Fur to highlight. Now for the lenses, which I always like to leave till last. I guess I feel it kind of brings the marine to life. Start with a small line of white scar in the centre of each lens. Finish up with some Blood Angels red contrast on each lens to give us the impression the lenses are glowing. The last thing to do is to assemble all the parts and for this I like to use some super glue because I don't want to damage the paint with poly cement. For this tutorial I really wanted to make painting black and silver a bit more interesting to really help your iron hand stand out on the tabletop. So let's see how it turned out. Our Iron Hands Heavy Intercessor is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint some of your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel including how to apply transfers and lots of ways to paint your Space Marines. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon or becoming a channel member which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.